Yes, sir. 155 brand new luxury cars, sir. Are they good runners? Well, let's put it this way. You would have beat them in a race. Oh, 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 oh. No, sir. Yes, sir. They're good runners, sir. So, um, how much exactly? <laughs> Hang on! Look at this, she's reading a book! That's not normal for a five-year-old. I think she might be an idiot. Listen to this. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. Ah! Stop scaring your mother with that book, boy! I'm a girl. And she keeps trying to tell me stories, Terry. Stories. Who wants to hear stories? It's not normal for a girl to be off thinking. I'm going to call you straight back. Would you please shut up? I'm trying to put off the biggest business deal of my life and I have to listen to this. It's your fault, you know. You spend all of our money and you expect me to get us out. What am I, a, a flaming escapologist? Escapologist, he says. What about me then? I've got a whole house to look after. Dinners don't microwave themselves, you know. If you're an astropologist, then I must be an acrobat to balance that lot. The world's greatest acrobat. I'm off to bleach my roots and I shan't be talking to you for the rest of the evening, you horrid little man. But I'm going to make us rich. Rich? How rich? Very rich. Russian businessmen. Very, very stupid. Your genius husband is going to sell them 155 knackered old bangers as brand new luxury cars. But that's not fair. The cars will break down. What about the Russians? Fair? Listen to the boy. I'm a girl. Fair does not get you anywhere. You did get it to it, Brian. All I can say is saying heavens, Michael here has inherited his old man's brain. Hey, son. Michael. Hmm, well, I shall take your money when you earn it, and I shall spend it. But I shan't enjoy it because of the despicable way in which you have spoken to me tonight. This is your fault with your stupid reading and your stupid books. It wasn't my fault. I didn't do anything. That's not right. Right? Right? I'll tell you something. We're off to school in a few days' time, and you won't be getting right there. No, I know your head, mistress. I get the trunch full, and I've thought all about you and your big, smarty pants ideas. Great, big, strong, scary woman she is. You used to compete in the Olympics through the hammer. Imagine what she's going to do to a horrible, squeaky little goblin like you, boy. I'm a girl. Now get off to bed, you little.
prepare means a good brain. Now the secret to my success in business is... Secrets? Yes, of course, secret. The secret to my success is this. Oil a violet's head, tonic for men. Now stand back, son, the old man's going to work. Oh, yeah. All us the stuff. All us were sad, all right. All us the bananas right there. Now listen, son. A man simply cannot fail to get noticed when he looks like this.
life. We have everything. But we do not have the one thing in the world we want most. But the one thing. We do not have a child. Patience, my love. Patience, my love, the husband replied. The time is on our side. Even time loves us. Matilda. But time is the one thing no one is master of. And as time passed, they grew quite old and still had no child. At night, they would listen to the silence of their big, empty house and imagine how beautiful it would be if it was filled with the sounds of a child playing. Matilda, this is very sad. Do you want me to stop? Don't you dare. Their sadness overwhelmed them and drew them on to ever more dangerous feats as their work became the only place they could escape the inescapable tragedy of their lives. And so it was. They decided to perform the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It, it is cold, said the escapologist, announcing the event to the world's press who had gathered together with base breath. The burning woman, burning through the air, with dynamite in her hair, over sharp and spiky objects, caught by the man locked in the cage. And it is the most dangerous feat ever known to man. Why? Why? Why did you hear what he just said? Just you 
knock on the door, Jenny. Just knock on the door. Don't be pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. There's nothing to fear. You're being pathetic. It's just a door. You've seen one before. Just knock on the door. Look at you trying to hide, silly. Standing outside the principal's office like a little girl. It's just pathetic. Look at you hesitating, hands shaking. You should be embarrassed. You're not a little girl. It's just pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. What are you waiting for? Just knock on the door. Perhaps I will wait. She's probably having a meeting or something and won't want to be interrupted. If anything, pause her in these situations. A sensible one should avoid conversation when possible. I'll come back later then. Knock on the door, Jenny. Just knock on the door. Don't be pathetic. Enter. Well, don't stand there like a wet tiff. You get on with it. Yes, Miss Trunchbull, there's in in in, in my in my class, that is, there's Matt a uh, the little girl, Matilda Wormwood. And Matilda Wormwood. Told me to watch out for the brat, though. Said she's a real wart. Oh, no, headmistress. I don't think Matilda's that kind of child at all. What is the school motto, Miss Honey? Bombinatum est magitum. Bombinatum est magitum. Children are maggots. In fact, it must have been her who put that stink bomb under my desk this morning. I'll have her for that. Thank you for the suggestion. But I didn't. Miss Trunchbull, Matilda Wormwood is a genius. Nonsense! Haven't I just told you she is a gangster? But she knows her times table. So she's learnt a few tricks. But she can read. So can I. I have to tell you, headmistress, that in my opinion, this little girl should be placed in the top form with the 11 year olds. We cannot just place her in the top form with the 11 year olds. What kind of world would that be? What about rules, honey? Rules! I believe that Matilda Wormwood is an exception to the rules. An exception to the rules in my school? Look at my trophies, see how my trophies gleam in the sunlight, see how they shine. What do you think it took to become English hammer-throwing champion? 1969, do you think in that moment when my big moment that I treated the rules with casual disdain. Well, like hell, as I stepped up to the circle, did I change my plan? What? As I chalked up my palms, did I wave my hands? I did not. As I started to spin, did I look at the view? Did I drift off and dream for a minute or two? Do you think I faltered or mended my rotation? Do you think I altered my intended elevation? As the hammer took off, did I change my grunt from the grunt I had practiced for merely a month? Not a dot, not a dot, did it stray from the plot? Not a detail of my throw was adjusted, all forgotten. Not even when the hammer left my hand and sailed high up, up above the stands. Did I let myself go? No, 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 no. No. If you want to pull the hammer for your country, you have to stay inside the circle all the time. And if you want to make the team, you don't need happiness or self-esteem. You just need to keep 
stupid, nasty, stinking, slimy, great big question asking how dare they speak to me like that? Who the hell do they think they are? Filthy, filthy, nasty, stupid Russians. Oh, don't tell me we're not rich. It was the mileage. They took one leg of the mileage on the first car and said that these cars were not good. I told them, I said the reason the mileage was so high was a manufacturing mistake. Is that true? Of course it's not true. So you lie. Of course I lied. And they didn't believe you? Of course they didn't believe me. I've got green hair. I've got hair. And what's this? Another flaming book. What's wrong with the telly? She's got no respect for that one. It's all books and stories. No, no, it's a lovely book. Honestly, you should read it. I'm sure you Lovely? Here's what I think of your lovely. No, it's from the library. It's a library book. You shall not the help crap. There you go. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> And while you're at it, why don't you stick your stupid book to your stupid head? <laughs> 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 Known as Nigel. He's over there, under those coats. 
where he's been for the last hour, actually. What? An hour? Yes. You see, unfortunately, Nigel suffers from the rare but chronic sleep disorder, narcolepsy. The condition is characterised by the sufferer experiencing bouts of chronic fatigue and falling suddenly asleep, often without knowing or any warning at all. You see, he fell asleep and we put him under those coats for safety, didn't we? Didn't we? Snarkalepsy. <laughs> He'll probably think he's in bed when he wakes up. Instant. 
Calculate this. 5, 6, 7, 8, 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, fantastic, Kim! Mine is incredible, and with a little help from us, Mine? Her mind? You really don't know anything, do you? Somewhere along the way, my dear, you've made an awful error. You ought and blame yourself now, come along. But wrong. People don't like smarty pants what go around claiming that they know stuff we don't know. Now here's a tip. What you know matters less than the volume with which what you don't know is expressed. Content has never been less important. So Thank you. 
the acrobat's sister, a frightening woman who used to be an Olympic class hammer thrower and who loved nothing more than to scare the children of the town. People whispered that in her dark and brooding heart, she resented her sister, both her success and her love. Suddenly, up jumped the escapologist, dressed as usual in his cape and spanking costume, but there was no sign of the acrobat and no glimpse at all of her shiny white scarf. And instead of the musical fanfare, there was silence as he solemnly strode into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite in her hair over sharks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in the cage has been cancelled. No! Yes, the audience gasped so loud that a passing airplane caught it on its instrumentation and recorded it as an atmospheric phenomenon. Cancelled because my wife is pregnant! Oh, Matilda! Absolute silence. You could have heard a fly burp. Then, suddenly, the audience jumped to its feet and roared its appreciation. The great feat was instantly forgotten and the applause went on for nearly an hour. So it has a happy ending. Forgotten by everyone except, that is, the acrobat's sister. When all had quieted down, she stepped forward and produced a contract. A contract? A contract you have signed to perform this feat and perform this feat you shall. No! I am paying you for the posters, publicity, the catering, the toilet facilities. If I give the crowd their money back, where is my profit? A contract is a contract is a contract. My hands are tied. The burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite in her hair over sharks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in the cage will be performed and performed this day or off to prison. You both shall go. No, no. Well, what happens next? I, I don't know yet. I'll tell you tomorrow. What's tomorrow? I don't know if anyone's will make it until tomorrow. Mrs. Felt, oh, are you crying? Maybe I shouldn't tell you anymore. No, Matilda, we must find out how it ends. I'm not crying because it's sad. It's just, well, they want that child so very much. It must be wonderful for a child to feel so wanted. Yes, wonderful. Goodbye, Mrs. Felt. like a serpent into the kitchen and stole a piece of my private chocolate cake off the tea tray. No, I did not! Miss Trunchbull, Matilda's been here all morning. Sticking up with a little snot nose, are you? Well, this crime happened before school. Therefore, I say she is guilty. Okay, look, all right. I stole the cake. And honestly, I was definitely, sort of, almost.
was thinking about owning up. Maybe. The thing was, I was having a lot of trouble with my belly. You see, the Trunchbull's cake was so good that I'd scoffed it down too quickly, and now I was beginning to fight back. Oops. See? I'm not guilty. I didn't do anything. You are guilty because you are a crook. You are a fiend. And I shall crush you. I shall pound you. I shall consign you to the seventh circle of hell, child. You shall be... You shall be destroyed! It was the biggest burp I had ever done. It was the biggest burp I had ever heard. It was the biggest burp I had ever heard about. It was like the entire world went silent for that burp to exist. As a huge cloud of chocolatey gas wafted my mouth across the classroom, past Lavender, past Alice, past Matilda, and then my great big beautiful chocolatey boat would seem now to have a mind of its own, wafted full into the face of the Trunchbull. Yes, Bogtrotter, it is. Oh, well, I did. Thank you. Oh, that makes me so happy. It gives me a warm glow in my lower intestine. Oh, cool!
sometimes, even me. Well done, Bob Trotter. Good show. Well, come along, Bob Trotter. What? Where? Did I not tell you? Eating the cake was only the first part of your punishment. There's two parts. The second part. And the second part is choking. No, please, you can't. Yes, Mr. Trotter, please, you can't. What did you think? I'd let myself be defeated by these little maggots. What do you think I am? Weak? Pathetic? You? But he's done what you asked. He's eaten it all. I, I did it. I ain't not. I, I did it. No, no, I would like to apologize for some of the things that have been going on here tonight. They are not nice things and they are not right things and I would like to state guarantorically that we do not want any child that might be here tonight to go home and try these things out for themselves. I am of course talking about reading books. It is normal for kids to behave in this fashion. It stunts the mind, wears out the eyes makes kids ugly, stinky, fatty, sweaty, fatty, poorie, gaseous, and crucially, it gives them brucus of the mind. Under no circumstances do we condone such activities, and we do so utterly without reservoirs. Can I just ask, how many people here tonight have ever read a book? <laughs> you, ma'am, what's your name? Well, Megan, don't take this the wrong way, but... Bookworm, bookworm, stupid little bookworm, reading little books like a little bookworm. You read books like a worm. Worms are stupid, you're a swarm. <laughs> now, now, Megan will learn from that. Won't stop her from reading books, but she'll never put her hand up in a theatre again. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you this evening the pinnacle of our achievements as a species, the very reason we bothered from evolving out of unicorns in the first place. Somewhere on a show I heard that a picture tells a thousand words. So tell you if you're bothered to take a look is the equivalent of like lots of books. All I know, I know from telly, this big beautiful box of facts. If you know a thing already, baby, you can sit a channel over just like that. Endless joy and endless laughter, folks living happily ever after. All you need to make you wise is 23 minutes plus advertisements. Why would we waste our energy turning the pages? One, two, three. We can sit happily on a lovely back, please. Watching people singing and talking and doing stuff. All I know, I live from Teddy. The bigger the Teddy, the smarter the man. You can tell from more big telly just what a clever fed I am. Take it away, son. You can't learn that from a stupid book. All I know, I learn from telly. What to think and what to buy. I was pretty smart already, but I'm really, really smart, very, very smart. Endless content, endless channels, endless chat and endless panels. All you need to fill your muffin without having to really think or nothing. Why would we waste your energy trying to work out for the seas? When we could sit happily on a lovely back for these watch of slightly famous people talking to really famous people. All I know, or they're from telly. The bigger the telly, the smarter the man. You can tell from my big telly just what a clever fit I am. Who the dickens is Charles Dickens? Mary Steady, she sounds smelly. Charlotte Bronte, do you not want a? Jane Austen in the composting. James Joyce doesn't sound nice. Ian McEwen, oh, I feel like spewing. William Shakespeare, Williams makes me a Moby Dick. 
<coughs> Easy, Grandmas. All together now. All I know, I live from telly. The bigger the telly, the smarter the man. You can tell from my big telly. What a very clever
Miss Hilda, how lovely to see you. Are you enjoying school? Oh, yes. Bits of it, anyway. Mrs. Phelps, where's the revenge section? What? Revenge section? I don't believe we have one of those. Why? Is there someone at school who's behaving like a bully? Oh, no. Not the child, exactly. Matilda, you show something. Do you want to hear the next part of the story? Story? Did you say story? Matilda, what are we waiting for? I'm so clever, I'm so clever, I'm so very, very 
a game, is it? Then let us see what this creature thinks she can do when the wrath of a grown man stands before her. But that was the last the little girl ever saw of her father, because he never came home, ever again. Progress. 
once we've exercised these demons, they shall be too pooped for scheming. Some double time discipline should stop the rot from setting in. All right, I think it's time we toughen them all up with a little bit of double time. Two, three, four. Discipline, discipline for children who aren't listening or midgets who are fidgeting and whispering and history. They're chattering and chittering. They're nattering and twittering. is tempered with a smattering of discipline. We must begin insisting on rigidity and discipline, persistently resisting this anarchistic mischief in these minutes. You are frittering while pandering and pity. Little ones like this, they just need discipline. The nimpering and simpering, the whimpering and timpering, the miss I need a tissue, it's an issue we can fix. There's no mystery to mastering the art of classroom mistressing. It's discipline, discipline, discipline. the smell of rebellion, the stench of revolt, the reek of creep, new best in plotting, a whiff of resistance, the pong of dissent, the funk of moral fiber rotting. Go. Imagine a world with no children. Close your eyes and just dream. Imagine, come on, try it. The peace and the quiet, a burbling stream. Now imagine a woods with a cottage. And inside that cottage we find a parrot called Zeke and a carnival freak who can fold paper hats with his mind. And he says, don't let them stay. Waiting for you, singing nay, 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 she's mad. Aha! Uh -huh. And there, just like I said, the stinking maggot rears his head. Even the piteous, wittiest mess can harbor seeds of silliness. Have you ever seen anything more repellent? Have you ever smelled anything worse than the smell of repellent? And how if we are 
were traveling at almost the speed of light and were holding on lives that light had still traveled away from us at the full speed of light which seems right in a way but i'm trying to say i'm not sure but i wonder if inside my head i'm not just a bit different from some of my friends these answers that come into my mind and bidding these stories delivered to me fully written and when everyone shouts like they seem to like shouting the noise in my head is incredibly loud and i just wish they'd stop my dad and my mom and the telly and stories would stop just once and i'm sorry i'm not quite explaining it right but this noise becomes anger and the anger is light and this burning inside me would usually fade but it is in today and the heat and the shouting and my heart is pounding and my eyes are burning and suddenly everything everything is quiet like silence but not really Just that still sort of quiet like the sound of a pen being turned in a book or a pause in a walk in the woods quiet like silence but not really silent just that That's not what he says. 
He's not proud at all. He calls me a liar and a cheat and a nasty little creep. I see. Well, here we are, home sweet home. Are you poor? Oh, well, yes, I am, very. Don't they pay teachers very much? Well, they don't, actually. But I'm poorer than most because of other reasons. You see, I used to live with my aunt. But one day I was out walking and I saw this old shed and I fell completely in love with it. I ran to the farmer and begged him to let me move in. He thought I was mad. But he agreed and I've lived here ever since. But Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. I'm not strong like you, Matilda. You see, my father died when I was young. Magnus was his name and he was so kind. But when he was gone, my aunt became my legal guardian. And she was mean and cruel like you can hardly imagine. And then when I got my job as a teacher, she presented me with a bill for looking after me all those years. She'd written down everything, every tea bag, every electricity bill, every tin of beans. And she made me sign a contract promising to pay her back every penny. She even produced a document saying that my father had left her his entire house. But did he really do that? Magnus, I mean, did he really just give her his house? I don't know, but I find it hard to believe. Just like I cannot believe that he would have killed himself. Which is what she said happened. <gasps> you think? You think she did him in, don't you, Miss Honey? I cannot say, Matilda. All I know is that years of being bullied by that woman made me, well, pathetic. I was trapped. And that's why you live here. This roof keeps me dry when the rain falls. This door helps to keep the cold at bay. On this floor I can stand on my own two feet. On this chair I can write my lessons. On this It is enough for 
me It isn't much But it is enough For me Miss Honey Is this your father's scarf? Well, yes, it is My mother gave it to him before she died You see, she was an acrobat Well, well yes, how did you... And my father, he was an, an escapologist. escapologist. Matilda, how do you know that? So they were your parents. What? Who? The I don't... people in my story. What story? A story. I've been telling a story, and I thought I was making it up. But it's real. It's your life. I've seen your life. You've seen my life? She did him in. Let's go to the police. Oh, no, no, Matilda, we can't. We have no evidence. But you could just tell them. Tell them she did it. Well, that won't work, Matilda. It would be my word against hers, and they would never believe she was capable of murder. But why? She was so cruel to you. She beat you. She shouted at you. She locked you up in tiny cupboards and threw you in cellars. Stop, Matilda, please. Miss Honey, you're wrong as a murderer. She killed Magnus. Who is she? A contract is a contract is a contract. Miss Trunchbull! What? Dumb! D-Y-P! In me! What's going 
on you. Table, L-U-K-E-S, and me. Stop this. Here with all the trophy, banana, GTA, ABL. Stop this, stop this, do you hear? Nuggets, S-T-P-A-D-Y-F. Snot nose, you two, up, 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 up. What is going on? I said stop it. Naughty, P-U-F, X-T-Y-N. Big fat bully, P-Y-T-L-F-D-R-S, stop it. an entire array of chokies, one for each and every one of you. And now that our little spelling test is complete, I can tell you that you have each failed. You see, children, in this world, there are winners and Look! there are- the jump, it, it's moving. What is this? Look, it's writing something. What, what's going on? Who is doing this? No one's doing anything. Agatha. So, so this? Agatha, this is madness. No, no.
the acrobat and the escapologist's daughter received a letter from a solicitor. It said that her parents' will had mysteriously turned up and she was now the owner of the beautiful old house, which had, up until that moment, been owned by the evil aunt, one Agatha Trenchpole. She moved in immediately and she was very happy, happier than she had ever been in her entire life. As for Miss Trunchbull, she was never seen again. The chokies were immediately destroyed, and a new headmistress took over. And her name was Miss Honey. And it was often said that it was the best school in all the land. And do you know something else? Matilda was never again able to move things with her eyes. I thought perhaps it was because her mind was being challenged. But she said it was because she no longer had a need for her superpowers. Sometimes I would look at Matilda, this little girl who had done so much to help others, but who was stuck with parents who were mean and cruel and called her names, and I would feel my blood boil, and I would wish that I could just do something. And so, this is the end, and I wish so much that I could tell you that this story has a happy ending. And I wish so much that I could tell you that Matilda got the love that she deserved. But perhaps the truth is, not all stories have happy endings. From San Diego, we're going to Spain. Spain? But why? Because this idiot, this nit, this twit brain seemed to think it was a good idea to sell 155 old bangers to the Russian Mafia. Well, I didn't know there was a flaming Russian Mafia, did I? Come on now, we're leaving and we're never coming back. Oh, let Matilda stay here with me. I beg your pardon? Mr. Wormwood, I would love to take Matilda. If she would like to stay with me, that is. I, I would treat her with love and care and respect and I'd pay for everything. Would, would you like that, Matilda? You mean, leave old daughter here with you? What did you say? Did you call me? They'll be here any minute. Dad, you, you call me? They'll be here any minute.
Borghiti. I am Sergei. It is true honor to meet you, Matilda Warby. Matilda, your father has been very rude to us both. Yes. Now I can very easily have my friends teach him a man. And one day, when he gets out of hospital, he will still be stupid, but not so rude, I think. I give this as gift to you. What do you say? Mr. Sergei, this is a very tempting offer, but he is my father and I am his daughter. I think I've had enough of revenge. Because they had found each other. Yes, they had found each other. 